Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. I hope you're all doing well today. Uh, today I've got a cool little bike for you. It's uh, James Stewart's old uh, old KX125 um, that I've managed to find. Uh, I, try, <laughs> I want to try and get a good like side profile of it. Let me get going the pits real quick and uh, let's show it. There we go. That looks much better. Um, I really, really, really like these old KX125s. I love the shape of them. Uh, I love uh, watching like the videos of bikes being rebuilt and these are some of my favourite ones once they're all redone. Uh, I just think they look so, so cool. Um, yeah, I think because of my age, I, I never really got to see a whole lot of, uh, of old school uh, Bubba. Uh, I think his, his prime 125 days, well, they were like around 2002 or so. Uh, I would have been about six years old back then, so I wasn't uh, too heavily into motocross at all. It wasn't until uh, maybe I was about 10 or 11 or so that I started getting into bikes and started riding. Um, yeah, obviously everyone knows Bubba, <laughs> bit of an icon of the sport. Um, I remember, I've, I've got this really, really old motocross DVD, it's my favourite one today still, it's called The, the Great Outdoors 2, um, and it was basically back when Bubba was in his prime, but I've, I believe in that year that it was, he was just coming back from an, an injury, because he came back late, um, there was a couple rounds into the season that he showed up, and he basically, he just... He just wiped the floor of everybody, he won literally nearly every single race there was. Um, I think in that same year, in the, in the 125 class, you had Mike Brown, you had Ryan Hughes, who is literally one of my favourite motocross riders of all time, just FYI in case you didn't know that. Um, and then you also had Grant, Grant Langston as well back then. Uh, and in the, uh, in the, well, in the 250 class at the time, I was going to say 450 was there for a second, um, you had uh, K Dub and R. Michael battling for that championship. Um, and I, I actually really want to dig that uh, DVD out and have a watch it at some point. It's so, so good. Uh, I'd recommend, uh, I'm not sure where you can buy it anymore, if there's anywhere that still sells it where it's so old or if you can watch it online or anything like that. But uh, there's just something about it. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's the music or if it's just the old school feel of the riding and such, but it's it's such a good DVD. Def definitely give it a watch. Um, you see some races in there where uh, Bubble literally comes from dead last, like a minute back off the start where he gets uh, caught up on the start straight and still comes back and wins and he's just absolutely nuts um, and I thought the Red Bud would be a good track to uh, ride for this purely because um, to my knowledge is uh, Bubba the only person to ever get over the Roccos on a 125 and there is a video of it on YouTube somewhere um, to my knowledge I think it's absolutely like potato quality like watching a PowerPoint presentation oh my god Jesus Christ hang on <laughs> oh there's a going right yeah like watching a PowerPoint like the quality is so bad but uh, the man was just absolutely nuts. Uh, when, you, when you go back and watch uh, old footage of him, it's, it's the corner speed and just uh, how he stays so low everywhere. Obviously, he invented, he didn't invent the scrub, but obviously he pioneered it. Um, so yeah, I think everyone loves James, big, uh, big ambassador of the sport. And it, I, I personally still think it's a bit of a shame how he went out of the sport. I, I reckon he still had a couple of years left in him. Uh, got a little bit unlucky, I reckon. Oh, you couldn't write it, could you? Literally sit down to start recording for two minutes and the front door rings. <laughs> oh, bloody other people in the family getting a parcel. Got them out of breath now for run downstairs. Uh, where was I? So, uh, yeah, James Stewart. Absolutely love the man. I'm, uh, I'm very glad that he's still around the sport in some capacity. You know, he's, uh, he's with Chase Sexton now, which is pretty cool. And I do like uh, Chase as well as a rider. I think he's a really just cool guy in general. He seems sound. Um, I wish him all the best in this upcoming Supercross season. Uh, I really, really like his technique on the bike. Like he's so, he just does it right. If you know what I mean, like just with his attacking position and, and everything like that. He's, he's literally, if I could pick a riding style, I think Sexton is probably one of the people I would like to, uh, to take after. Right, let me see. I'm pretty sure I cleared this uh, lead pass app on the 125. Try again. Ooh, stretch it out. Dab that break. Oh, that was close. I think that was closer than the last time. I think I needed to shift up a bit there. It's fine. This, uh, this bike, it's, uh, it's quicker than I expected it to be. Um, it's from the... I, I, I did finally give in. I downloaded the CBMX uh, pack. You know, there's this ongoing uh, kind of like war in the community between the OEM bikes uh, and the CBMX bikes. Um, purely the reason being is the OEM bikes were kind of all created for this game. Uh, and the CBM bikes, I believe, are taken from other games, like just models taken from other games and imported into MX bikes. Um, so there's a little bit of controversy there. I, I don't want to get into all of the uh, all the nitty gritty of it. Uh, I can just download those to see what sort of interesting bikes there are in there, see if uh, I can translate in, any of it into content for you guys, which uh, which I can. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so there'll be a couple of videos, I reckon, of some of the bikes are in that pack. It's pretty. Uh, 
pretty expensive. Uh, won't, I won't leave a link down below to it because it, it's not hard to find if you want to find it, but I'm not sure uh, not sure where we stand really on bikes being taken from, from other games. I know it's a bit of a, a bit of a grey area. I don't want to uh, promote it unnecessarily, but I just thought it would be a, good, a cool idea. I saw this bike, saw the, uh, saw the skin on it, and I thought, yeah, why not? <laughs> and then, you know, of course, it, it was ended up being a good thing as well because then I ended up thinking about uh, the, the old uh, Grey Outdoors DVD that I've got and all of the, uh, the memories that I have at least of watching uh, watching these old bikes and uh, it just it, it, it really really makes me want to go and uh, get on my my 125. Uh, if, if any of you don't know, I have a 2000 and say nine or eight, it's eight or nine. I'm, I'm going to hate myself for not actually knowing the exact year. Uh, Why is it 125? Uh, I absolutely love the bike, it's literally bulletproof, although I say that, it does need an engine rebuild right now, which is why it's, uh, it's been sat in storage for a couple of years, um, but every now and then if a, um, an enduro would come up locally around me, um, I would, uh, I'd hop on that bad boy and just have a little little bit of fun riding it through the trees and stuff like that. Um, never never any like hardcore enduro stuff, I'm, I'm far too shit on a motorbike to be doing things like that. But. Uh, just your standard, uh, what's called like hare and hounds, which is essentially it's it's like three hours, and it's just do as many laps as you can. Um, it's uh, it's a local track by me called Canada Heights. It's from the UK, you know exactly what it is. Um, but it's, it takes part of the motocross track. There's a massive uh, open field next to it as well. Um, and then there's a massive wooded section, it just kind of combines all the three. Uh, and I just used to love just swinging a leg over the 125 every now and then and giving it a go. Um, still to this day, I know I turn faster on my 125 than I ever have on my 250. Um, I think that's just down to how light the bike is and uh, me never really riding much anymore. But uh, yeah, I am, I'm still a massive two-stroke lover through and through. Uh, the only reason I ever changed to four-stroke in the first place um, was back when I did ride fairly frequently and I was racing most weekends as just from a competitive standpoint because uh, from where I live at least I know things are probably much different in America where you got your different classes and such um, but you could be racing against 450s on a 125 um, and especially when you get to tracks where they're a bit loamier um, uphill starts and things like that you just you just had no chance on a 125 against the 450s so it was uh, purely from a competitive point of view that I switched to the, uh, two, uh, the 254 stroke at the time but uh, see, I don't, I don't really race anymore. I just, uh, just ride my bike for fun. Um, so I wouldn't mind getting back onto the, uh, to the two strokes and uh, just giving it a go again. Really, uh, if I ever got the opportunity to ride one of these old bikes, I would absolutely snatch it up because um, I managed to ride. I'm not sure what year it was. But it was a really, really old RM uh, 250 uh, back in the day. One of my, my friend's dad had one. Um, and I think the best way of describing it, it was like riding an armchair. The suspension was so, so soft on it, it was unreal. And you could literally just uh, uh, bog around the track in like third, fourth gear and it would just keep pulling. It was such a fun bike to ride. Uh, I think that I think that is as well has been in uh, storage for years and years now. I think um, they're all slowly, uh, slowly dying. But um, I've seen kind of a resurgence recently on the two strokes. And um, I know that, that some manufacturers are bringing them back. It's pretty cool to see as well. Um, one day, maybe, who knows. Uh, I think I'm at the point where uh, if I don't ride very often I might as well just uh, sell the four-stroke and go forward two-stroke, but um, that is uh, that's something for another day. I won't get into that too much now. Um, overall, um, for this bike, uh, uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, it, it's, it's faster than I expected the, a KX, an old, old KX125 to be. Uh, I'm not sure how much uh, effort went into the behind-the-scenes stuff of the bikes. So Obviously, each, uh, in the OEM pack, for example, all the bikes have their own geometry and weights and how and how they handle and things like that and uh, like true to the actual real bikes uh, i'm not sure how much effort's gone into each one of these bikes uh, the, the only negative thing i'd say at the moment is the uh, the sound for this is getting a little bit uh, a little bit irritating it just sounds like uh, sounds like a wasp in my ear the whole time but um i never personally have tried doing a sound mod for a game but i've seen threads uh, like even even on mx simulator days for example and uh, just how hard it is to uh, get good realistic sounds into a game uh, so yeah hats off for any people who make anything uh, really appreciate it really uh, appreciate being able to use these different bikes as well and uh, a lot of the time it's it's not a case of uh, what goes into it really it's it, it's just being able to sit down and have maybe like 30 minutes and, and you can do something different um, what I'm a fan of at the moment is I've almost got a thousand hours on this game now and I've done basically everything there is to do in the game so when I can uh, discover something slightly different and new I'll, I'll do so 
um, controversy aside, <laughs> it's still it's still nice to do. And there are some weird and wacky bikes in the uh, in that pack that I downloaded. So uh, who who knows what you end up seeing in your sub box in the future? It might be a little bit interesting, but um, depends uh, how well received this video is. I don't want to keep making videos on something if there's going to be uh, the arguments about the bikes being used and, and such. And um, I'm purely doing it as a consumer at this point. I mean, I'm not advertising anything. Uh, I'm just uh, and sitting here enjoying his gaming experience and pressing the record button and sitting here talking to his computer. So, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, I'm pretty sure as soon as I finish recording this, I'm going to either hunt around my house for a couple of hours and try and find this old DVD, or if I can't find it, I'll see if I can buy it online somewhere else, or see if anyone's even been nice enough to uh, upload a full version somewhere, because when I was doing a little bit of research, I found uh, The Great Outdoors 1, someone's uploaded it to YouTube actually, which is pretty cool, which I don't think I've ever watched, so if I can't find the second one, I'll, uh, I'll watch the first one. Um, yeah, that'll do it for me. Hopefully you've, you've enjoyed this uh, little bit of a run again, a little bit of a reminisce about the quote-unquote the good old days. Um, and yeah, this has uh, been quite a fun bike. Uh, not difficult to ride at all. Really good. Uh, and of course, looks really cool. I'm a, I'm a bit guilty, a bit biased towards the old BXs. I think they look really, really cool. Uh, and that'll do it for me. Please uh, drop a like on the video if you did enjoy. Always really appreciate it. Helps the channel out more than you can ever imagine. And drop a sub as well. Uh, I don't know what we're on the road to now. I, I was always saying road to 10k, but we've uh, we've reached that. But yeah, road to uh, road to the next one. <laughs> road to twist. So let's just say 20. Uh, thank you very very much, guys. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you in the next video. Peace. Got bad shit all up in my mind right now. Fuck it, give me a minute and I'ma let it all out. I don't give a shit about an opinion, be another dimension when I wake up, wake up, wake up. Oh, bitch, it's time to fill the cup. Got no fucking love. I feel so stuck on my luck. Get fucked.